Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? <coughs> Excuse me. This morning. Sorry, my sinuses are all messed up again this morning. Ugh, I'm tired of this. This morning, we're going to be reading out of Mark 9.19. Bring him unto me. Now, we just read this uh, a couple days ago. The whole verse says, he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Let's go up here. Jesus heals a boy with an unclean spirit. Verse 14. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So the father asked him, How long? Or so he asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So the many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Powerful interaction that happened here. And a lot was learned by this particular interaction from the disciples. And a lot was shown from the Lord. He showed in this interaction how powerful he really is. Amazingly powerful. Despairingly, the poor disappointed father, the poor disappointed father, turned away from the disciples to their master. His son was in the worst possible condition, and all means had failed. But their miserable child was soon delivered from the evil one when the parent in faith obeyed the Lord Jesus' word, Bring him unto me. Children are a precious gift from God, but much anxiety comes with them. Boy, that's the truth. <laughs> Anybody who's had kids or even grandkids knows that to be true. There is a lot of anxiety. I mean, children are a blessing, but they are a trial in, the, in and of themselves. And depending on how they're raised, sometimes they're a tribulation in and of themselves. They may be a great joy or a great bitterness to their parent. They may be filled with the spirit of God or possessed with the spirit of evil. <laughs> I love how this is going. This person obviously had kids. Give me just a second. Let me go clear my nose out. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> this nasal spray is like instant relief because for, for stuffy nose. And that's all it is. There's not material there. It's just stuffy. All right, we're ready to go. So we'll pick up where we left off. In all cases, the word of God gives us one receipt for the curing of all their ills. Bring him unto me. Oh, for more agonizing prayer on their behalf while they are yet babes. Sin is there. Let our prayers begin to attack it. Our cries for our offspring should precede those cries which betoken their actual advent into a world of sin. And that's the truth. When I got saved, I commended the spirit of my two children. They were still babies under the Lord. They are his. The Lord will have them. I still pray for them. In the days of their youth, they or we shall see sad tokens of that dumb and deaf spirit, which will neither pray or write, nor hear the voice of God, in the soul. But Jesus still commands, bring them unto me. When they are grown up, they may wallow in sin and foam with enmity against God. Oh, yeah, they do. 
Then, when our hearts are breaking, we should remember the great physician's word, bring them unto me. Never must we cease to pray until they cease to breathe. No case is hopeless while Jesus lives. That's true. And that applies to anybody. The Lord sometimes suffers his people to be driven into a corner that they may experimentally know how necessary he is to them. Sometimes we have to live that rough life. Sometimes we, we have to go to very dark places to come to that place where we go, you know what, what am I doing? This, this isn't for me. Why should I have to live like this? Why should I have to be like this? I need the Lord. And then what happens? The person runs to him. Ungodly children, when they show us our own powerlessness against the depravity of their hearts, drive us to flee to the strong for strength. And this is a great blessing to us. Whatever our morning's needs may be, let it, let it like a strong current bear us to the ocean of divine love. Jesus can soon remove our sorrow. He delights to comfort us. Let us hasten to him while he waits to meet us. I couldn't have explained that better myself. I think the, the author of this did a great job on it. And many of us are in that boat where we have still, after years and years, still praying for our children. I'm praying for my adult children. It can be hard to, to live a life knowing of the possibilities of our own kids and, and the love we have for them. It just kills us to think that they would take that dark road all the way to its end, the abyss. But it's a possibility. It's also just as much a possibility that they could turn around at the last minute and come running back into the light. This gets into the importance of living as a true believer, being the genuine article. Because what the world will tell them all their friends and that, well, well, if it's real, they'll this. If it's real, they'll that. well, you need to see if it's actually real. Well, how would they know whether we stayed with it, whether we were genuine about it, whether we were real about it? And a lot of people get into this really weird act, acting or weird discussions about things. Not being real about it, not speaking of it in a way that shows we genuinely believe it instead of this pie-in-the-sky, airhead, you know, super spiritual, ethereal, mega, mega wonder believer, like I hear a lot of people do. And, and to me, that sounds like a commercial, sounds like a cheap hustle. The people that really talk about it, talk about it in real terms. Talk about it like it, it's something that actually happened to them, that Jesus came by, pulled up in the driveway, here we go. And then when it, everything was done, he left. You know, like he's somebody that stands right next to us all the time. That's what's going to win their kids over because that's what they're looking for. Is this real to that to my parents? Is this real to my grandparents? Your genuine faith will be a catalyst for them to come to faith. You living as a believer, living to glorify God every day will show them that it's true, that it's real, because they will start to get insights into it and start to see. See, the Holy Spirit and the work that the Lord does in us overflows past us and affects those in close vicinity. And so they will become the recipients of some of that. And that can be the catalyst to show them, you know what, maybe there is something to this. But see, right now they're out there fighting a liberal world. They're out there fighting a, a, a democratic mindset and a whole lot of other different <laughs> different mindsets and mentalities that have mixed together. They're out there dealing with that and all those people are naysayers. All those people have had terrible experiences from, for lack of a better term, unbelievers in their lives. People who have turned away from them, people who have driven them away, people who have acted strange and done terrible things.
to their own kids. A lot of kids didn't become gay or trans because that was something that they felt like they wanted to do. They became those things because they were pushed into it. Not only by their so-called friends, but by their own parents. They drove them to them. And a lot of them are coming back. The Lord has reached a great many of them, and a lot of them are coming out of that stuff. Realizing that what they experienced wasn't the reality. They discovered the reality. They met the Lord himself and have turned and taken a different course. It's a terrible world we live in. The world at large seeks to destroy everything and everyone. And right now, our children are being targeted. We need to go above and beyond to pray for them. We can do, we can do that this morning, all of us, for our children and grandchildren and even great-grandchildren, whatever the case may be. We can do that right now because a lot of us are dealing with, with problem kids. We can all pray for them right now. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. And to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you. Oh, oops. <coughs> thank you, Father, for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm still a little scatterbrained from all the stuff that's happened recently. Lord, we lift up our children in prayer. We lift up our grandchildren, something I'll never experience, sadly, but that's okay. Long story. And if need be, Father, we lift up our great-grandchildren, whoever they are, however they fall in, and whoever is adding to this prayer that is experiencing this. We lift all these kids up, and as a, a prayer of intercession, we lift all the children up around the world, those prayed for and those even not prayed for. We lift them all up, Lord, because children are a gift from you. They need our protection. They need our provision. They need our guidance, our correction. Many of us today are praying for adult children who are leading very rough lives or very blessed lives, yet they're into very dark things. I see your hand working in their lives, Lord, even my own adult children. But we pray for them. We lift them all up and pray for them, that, that you will give them the guidance they need, that you will open their eyes so they can see the truth. I think, I think late teens, early and mid-20s, and even, even early 30s, now, early 30s is a little bit of a struggle but because of how long people have been into that stuff. But I think those in those age groups have a great, a great propensity to grab onto faith. It's just look at what's being presented as faith. I mean, we look at the world and we look at how all these people are coming out after all these things that they've done that go directly against your word. I mean, they're literally giving the church black eyes. They're punching themselves in the face. And, and the world's seeing this and they're like, oh, well, there's your faith. Not knowing that that has no representation to, to what real faith is. And so all these children that are growing up have the capability to grab onto real faith. They just don't see it. Because what's out there on the forefront of the stage isn't real faith. Now, a lot of that, we take a lot of blame. A lot of that is our fault. We didn't work hard enough. We didn't try hard enough. We didn't push hard enough to make sure that was all they would be exposed to or to explain. In some cases, we, we came into the faith a little too late and didn't do enough because we didn't know enough. All excuses aside, Lord, we lift them up in prayer. All of them. That you show them your light. Show them your truth. And if you can use us as the vehicle for that, by all means. If not us, someone else. Anyone else. To show them the real truth. To show them your truth. To bring them to a place where they can... They can become exposed to you. And believe in you. And have faith in you. And trust in you. 
for all things. Just as much as those kids were a gift from you to us, Lord, may we give them back to you as a gift by bringing them to heaven under salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. We all want our kids to be saved, and we know there are some that just may not, but we still pray for them. And for all those who would seek their harm in any way, shape, or form that this, Lord, may they, they, may they be stopped. May they literally be unable to do anything and have any effect on them. But instead, may the truth grab them. May the truth grab them by the heart and bring them to you. We look at the world today, and, and I don't want to send kids out into that. Both, well, one of them at least is out there. The other one is somewhat protected here at home. But uh, it's a full, full-on demonic assault on children, on anyone younger today. The Lord protect them. Put your hedge of protection around them. Keep them from those things. And except for the cases where you're moving them into that so that they will see and turn and run back to you. Have mercy on the children, Lord. Especially the young young ones. So many people today, some of the horrible things they're doing concerning children. And, and of course, in Matthew, Matthew gives us a great, I forget the verse, Anyone who offends one of these little ones that believes in me would be better if a millstone were hung around his neck and he was dropped in the bottom of the ocean. There are a great many people today doing that. Some in the most horrible way possible. But Lord, may they be stopped. May they be cut off. May they be condemned and destroyed forever and ever. And may they be stopped from ever touching another child again. Horrible, horrible state our world is in today. And Lord, we pray against it. We stand against it. And stand for truth, for your word, for salvation, for the gospel. And may we be able to deliver that message, your message of love, to our own children and to other people's children. One plants, one waters, God provides the increase. And may it be to the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. Our kids and the topic of our kids in the world today is a very sensitive subject. The things that are being done to children today, some of them being done to children in the name of God, is just atrocious. The Father isn't going to let this go on forever. There is coming a time, and personally, I believe that time is very close, where he is going to say, that's it, no more. And he's going to put a stop to it. And it's going to be such a violent change that the world can't help but say, whoa, well, that was God. God finally decided to step up and say something, and, and, then, and then literal all hell will break loose on this earth. And they will be involved in it. And they will be on the receiving end of it. Wrath is coming. Wrath is going to be poured out. But judgment starts in the house of God. Don't forget that verse. And so what do we see happening on the world stage today? You see, have you seen all these pastors that have been outed? Have you seen all these guys arrested? All these youth pastors, all these assistants, all these volunteers, all these people arrested. I mean, these volunteers, they're homosexuals in most cases, and they're joining up with these churches as volunteers to get closer to young men. What? There's been tons of news stories about it. So, they're offending these kids in the name of God. What could be waiting for them? If it would be better if a millstone were hung around their neck and they were dropped in the bottom of the sea. What's waiting for them that's worse than that? That's pretty bad. <laughs> Because if you think about what that would look like, it's pretty rough imagination.
May the Lord be praised in all things done by his people. May the Lord be acknowledged in all things done by his people. And may the world at large that seeks the destruction of everyone, including his people, but especially the children, may the world be stopped in their tracks to harm children no more. It's a terrible thing what we're witnessing today. And, and it shouldn't have gone this way, but the church is to blame for, for some of it. Our government is to blame for much of it. Adults, adult, adults that know better are to be blamed. We're all at fault in some way because we didn't do enough, say enough, stand up against it. Now, keep in mind, and I will admit, Sometimes it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you stand up, how much you stand in, in defense of them. It's still going to happen anyway, but we do what we can. And so right now where most of us are at is all we can do is pray. Pray. Pray and be there for them. Tell them the truth. Even if they don't like it, even if it hurts their feelings, tell them the truth. Because the one thing they're going to remember when they get to an age in their life where they reach the end of their rope and they're like, I, I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I can only go to the person that I know told me the truth. And it will be you. And they'll come back to you because they'll say, you, you told me the truth. I didn't like it. I treated you badly for it. But you told me the truth. And no one else out there has seen fit to tell me the truth. Even my closest friends. Even those closest to me never told me the truth. You told me the truth. They will come back because of that. The prodigal son. I'll close with this. The prodigal son. The prodigal son said, Dad, give me give me everything that's due me uh, inheritance-wise. Okay, well, I'm not dead yet, son, but okay. And so he gave it to me. Went to town, partied it up. Woke up in the gutter. Living in a pig pen, eating eating uh, the, the pig food, which was a slop, whatever they threw out there. You know that wasn't Jewish. Finally came to his senses and like, you know what? The one person that loved me more than anybody, the one person that told me the truth, uh, the one person I know that I can always count on is my dad. I'm going back. At the very least... He'll hire me to work for it, and, and I'll at least, you know, have food and a place to live. In his darkest time, that kid remembered who was there, who told him the truth, who loved him more than anybody. He remembered it. And that's where he went. And dad left the door open. In fact, Dad met him on the road before he even got there. He's coming down the driveway. Is that my boy? That is my boy. We ran out there. I grabbed him. Y'all get a robe, get a ring, and give this boy a bath because he stinks. <laughs> let's get him in here. Let's, let's eat. Let's make a meal. Let's eat. He's home. He finally came back. He came to his senses. Sometimes they need that kind of humbling. Where they realize, you know what? I think I was wrong. My parents actually did love me. Be those kind of parents. And, and always be ready to receive them when they come walking down the driveway. And they say, I made a huge mistake. I forgive you. Let's go inside. Because the Lord always does that for us. You wandered away. You got into all these things, and then you finally realized the mistake you made. And now you're back. Come on in. Jesus said, I will heal their backsliding. And he was talking about the Jews in that particular instance, but he's referring to anyone who backslides. I'll, I'll, I'll heal their backsliding. I will not break the bruised reed. I will not quench the smoking flax. But instead, he's going to receive sinners. Because that's what he came to do. That includes our children. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.